Is the army in Algeria about to remove Abdelaziz Bouteflika? The chief of staff says the president's so ill he should be declared unfit to rule. But can a transition be achieved smoothly? And would it satisfy protesters on the streets? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Sika. The rule of Algerian President Abdelaziz Bouteflika is in trouble. The head of the army, Ahmed Gaid Salah, says he wants Bouteflika declared unfit for office. There have been more than a month of protests across the country. People are angry the president has held on to power for 20 years. And many don't just want Bouteflika gone, but a change in the ruling establishment they say is corrupt. And they're demanding free and fair elections. Laura Burden Manley sets up our discussion with this report. It was a dramatic development after weeks of protests in Algeria. The head of the army has called for the triggering of a constitutional process, or Article 102, paving the way for President Abdelaziz Bouteflika to be declared unfit to rule. We need to find a solution to sort out this crisis and to respond to the demands of Algerians within the constitution and within the sovereignty of the country in order to achieve that consensus and to achieve something that is accepted by all parties. The triggering of Article 102 means the Constitutional Council can declare the position vacant if the president is too sick to exercise his functions. If two-thirds of parliament agree, the chairman of the upper house will become acting president. If we follow the constitutions, then more or less the same people who are running the country at the moment will be running it for the foreseeable future, 45 days to 90 days, depending on the situation. Bouteflika has been in power for 20 years, but he's rarely been seen in public since suffering from a stroke in 2013. He's been credited with ending a decade-long civil war in 2002, which killed tens of thousands. But in recent weeks, hundreds of thousands of people have poured out into the streets, calling for Bouteflika to step down. Many are angry with Bouteflika's decision to run for a fifth term. They also accuse the ruling elite of corruption. But many are skeptical the process to remove the president will make any difference. We have reached an unfortunate situation, the one of today. We have no professional demands. We want the system to permanently leave. We want a new government. Many protesters fear the military and business leaders in power now will remain in place if the 82-year-old leader goes. But where there's fierce opposition in the streets, the same people have offered few alternatives to Bouteflika's rule. For Inside Story, Laura Bowden Manley. Well, let's bring in our guests now. In London, we have Algerian journalist and writer Jamil Adin Talib. In Oxford, Michael Willis, a professor at the University of Oxford and author of the forthcoming book, Algeria Politics and Society During the Bouteflika Presidency. And in Rabat, Morocco, we have Nufal Aboud. He is the executive director of the North Center for Conflict Transformation, where he researches democracy and peace building in the Maghreb region. Welcome, all of you, gentlemen. Um, Jamal al-Din Talib, if I could start with you. What do you make of, of this latest uh, uh, development and then this announcement from the military chief of staff? Algerians, if you... Um if you hear the Algerians mainly in social media, what they say, it's, they say clearly it's too little, too late. It's too little. That's not what they want. They want real regime change because they, they think uh, the, the chief of the army, what he's calling to trigger the constitutional process uh, to oust Bouteflika, it's like a coup, a masked coup. In a way, him who was loyal for many years to Bouteflika, he did not even respond to, for many years, Algerians were calling to trigger the constitution, this uh, article 102, before that, uh, article 88, before, before uh, Bouteflika changed 
the constitution and too late because Algerians, they don't want only Bouteflika to go. They want a real change, a regime change, the whole regime to change, not only Bouteflika. Michael Willis, how, how significant is this development uh, for you? And will it be enough to, to satisfy the protesters on the streets? I don't think it is quite as significant as some people are saying. I agree very much with your last speaker. I think there are probably two things going on here. Firstly, it's an attempt by the, the regime, the political leadership, to make some sort of, be seen to be making some sort of concession um, to the protesters in the street in the hope that they will go back home and the protests will be ended or reduced. Um, I think also it's an attempt to buy time for the regime. If this provision in the Constitution to remove Abdelaziz Bouteflika, the sitting president, because he's not physically able to take, um, uh, take, take, um, continue his duties, that will be, lead to a process of several months of transition, which will be managed and run and overseen by people who are part of the existing inner circle of the regime, which means very little is likely to change. So I think basically the move was really one of continuation. I think the only possible significance there might be is that it may indicate some splits within the ruling group that control Algeria, that there may be some difference between the president and his family who are involved in the regime, particularly his brothers, and possibly the army and the others on some side. But we really don't know. Nufal Aboud, who actually runs Algeria? Because if it's not Bouteflika himself, as many suspect, um, and that this, this ailing 82-year-old uh, leader who's, who's, who's in poor health uh, is, is a front for others. Who are these others exactly? So Algeria uh, have been running by what I call it the deep state, which is uh, uh, a number of people who functions within the hidden networks of power around the, the president and so forth. And what is interesting in this uh, uh, movement and demonstration and crisis in, in Algeria, it actually brings out the, the deep states and the, the contestations that the people of Algeria have been expressing along this movement. What's interesting now is and how fascinating, for example, uh, how this uh, movement by people in Algeria, mostly led by young women and men, has shifted and changed the tone of the deep states. Uh, uh, like, w if we read from the statement of the chief of staff of the military, uh, now the military suggests uh, it does not order. They suggested the Article 102. It's also fascinating how uh, this movement has shifted also the discourse, not only around national security, but some kind of democratic process, which is very interesting. You know, what is happening today is clearly states the division between the deep state, who are the hidden network of power in Algeria, and the new generation of Algerian people who are actually in the streets. Uh, Jamal Eddin Talib, what about the divisions within the government ex itself? I mean, where does the military leadership stand in relation to some of these others, other leaders behind uh, Bouteflika, civilian leaders, business leaders, and so on, his brother? Uh, is, there, is there a kind of jockeying for power going on there behind the scenes? Well, actually, according to uh, um, a French magazine, uh, Jeune Afrique, it says that uh, the move of the chief of the army was on, in consultation with uh, uh, Bouteflika's uh, family, mainly his brother, Said Bouteflika, Nasser Bouteflika, people they claim, actually. Uh, it's Said Bouteflika, mainly, who is running, running his the actual, the acting president of Algeria for many years, since 2013, since... Uh, uh, the stroke of uh, Bouteflika, and then also with the, uh, the, um, uh, the entourage of Bouteflika. It's like uh, who's running Algeria, it's actually. The deep state is, to correct maybe our colleague from Rabat, is um, maybe it's more like, uh, or it's referred to the uh, DRS, to the secret services, mainly to uh, uh, General Tufik, who, ran, who, uh, who was in charge of the uh, the secret services for a quarter of a century. Um, the, who is running Algeria is the cabal of generals, and with, the, the, with Bouteflika, his family, himself, and then the emergence of, also of uh, corrupt businessmen who are playing, who, who are part of the equation now in Algeria. Uh, uh, the chief of the army, 
his move is actually like we interpret it as uh, uh, the army is trying to to have the upper hand. Uh, there is a saying in Algeria, the, the famous Algerian historian and militant uh, uh, Mohammed Harbi is saying that all states, they have armies. Algeria is the exception. The army, they have a state. The army is, uh, is since the independence of Algeria, it held the real power, the real pouvoir, as they call it, in Algeria. Now, Gaid Saleh, he was loyal to Bouteflika. There is a personal uh, um, uh, dimension also in uh, this development. Uh, Gaid Saleh, uh, for many years, he was the uh, number two in the army. And then the head of the army at that time, in, in 2004, um, uh, General uh, Mohammed Al Ammari wanted to host him. Actually, Bouteflika saved him because at the end, Bouteflika, according to the constitution, he is the chief supreme of the army of Algeria. So uh, the move of Gaid Saleh is like uh, he is uh, trying to oust his boss in a way. And Bouteflika also held the position of uh, the defense uh, minister. Uh, his deputy is Gaid Saleh. Gaid Saleh was elevated as deputy uh, of uh, uh, me, uh, uh, defense minister in 2000. And 13, during that time where Bouteflika was ailing, uh, in poor health, and um, in, uh, was in a uh, French uh, hospital. Uh, Algeria, for many years, it has been um, the property, in a way, of the army, in a paternalistic way. Sometimes they play on this uh, um, uh, nationalist uh, revolution uh, fiber, in a way, but really, uh, the army is at the center of all what's happening in Algeria. They are held responsible, actually, for this situation. For many years, Algerians, they were calling, even now in demonstrations, for many uh, weeks, they were calling, they were saying, army and people are brothers. They were calling the chief of army, mainly, and the generals of the army to rectify what they think. It's mainly their uh, fault, their errors who led Algeria to this position. We, we, we don't have to forget that Bouteflika was brought to, the, to Algeria as a president by the army itself. Michael itself. Willis, there is, there, there is a sense from the protesters, uh, from, from the time that these protests began, that this is a lot more than, 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 than Bouteflika himself. I mean, he was the trigger when, when he announced that, uh, that he was going to run for another term. But uh, things have moved beyond that, haven't they? Many protests, they, they simply want to change to the whole system. So is this, what, what we've seen over the last 24 hours going to make any difference to them? I don't think it will make much difference. I think really it is about the whole system. You're absolutely right. It starts with Bouteflika. But uh, one of the reasons why people were so unhappy was the fact that, that Abdelaziz Bouteflika was so manifestly not running and in control of things. And the question was, who was actually running things behind the scene? And after he was elected in 2014, when he was similarly incapacitated, he's even more incapacitated now, and people felt humiliated. And the demand is for the whole system to go. That means not just the president, not just a few ministers, but the whole entourage surrounding the president. And there's demands for a, um, a constituent assembly to draw up a new constitution, have fresh elections, and change and reform the whole system. What the regime and the current leadership is trying to do is trying to rearrange a few people, shift people in, keep, keep essentially the same faces there, and, and return to business as usual once the protests have died down. But I don't think the, the protests are going to die down in the near future until there is really substantial change or there's a feeling there's going to be substantial change at the top of the regime where a lot of the old faces have left. Um, picking up on that then, uh, Nufal, if this, if, this, if this move by the military is all about just kind of rearranging, rearranging the seats of power, so to speak, um, and it's not going to be enough for the protesters on, on the streets, what are, what are they going to do then? What's their next move? Well, first, we have to understand one something that is very important. It's the relationship between the people and the military in Algeria. Uh, and average Algerians have some kind of pride in the military. There is a military draft, the compulsory military service. 
uh, the uh, the role of the military in in, uh, in the in the war in Algiers and the people uh, has built some kind of emotional connection, not only based on realism between the people and the military. This is we have to understand this very importantly. As a matter of fact, the army in Algeria is called the National Popular Army. Uh, and you can see the linkages even in the discourse between the people and the military. What happened is that uh, it's the same kind of relationship that the people had with uh, Bouteflika. They had not only based on realism, but it was also emotional on his role as being the savior for the civil war in Algeria. Uh, what happens is that the military have seen the decrease of the emotional connection between the president and the people. And they wanted to save what they could save, actually, by also suggesting some kind of emotional discourse, some emotional uh, conversation with the people by proposing several things, including the Article 102. And that they have learned from the fact that uh, uh, the president was not in the scene, he was not uh, addressing the nation directly. And that is why we see the chief of party more often in the media talking to the people to rebuild that kind of emotional romanticism kind of thing between the army and, and, and the people. I think it's a little bit too late. Why? Because first of all, even in the constitution, in Article 84 of this current constitution of Algeria, it says that the president addresses the nation directly, which hasn't been the case for the last six years and more. Uh, uh, it's a little bit too late for what the army is suggesting. Uh, uh, and what is suggesting in uh, Article 102 is most likely, if it's applied and implemented, is the president of the upper house of the parliament will take, uh, uh, will be the interim president. I don't, the, it, who is uh, Ben Saleh, who is the upper house inter interim, uh, who could be the interim president, is somebody who is an 80 years old person, an old man, uh, he's also not well, uh, and uh, does not have that emotional connection with the people, and I don't think the people would accept that either. Uh, so here, uh, to, to, uh, there is two images here. There is an image of a deep state, mostly men uh, in their 70s and 80s, and you have the people in the streets who are mostly young women and men in the streets uh, who did not necessarily live the civil war or, or the, the, the war of Algiers. So, how things are going to be uh, in the future, for me, for me uh, personally, is that it, everything will be based on who will be in that table of negotiations. Uh, the, the proposition of the uh, army, of the chief of staff of the army of applying the Article 102, for me, is an icebreaker. It's the beginning of some kind of negotiation between the deep states and the people. But who will be uh, uh, in the table of negotiation from the people, uh, that would be important. I would like to, and I hope, and I would like to see that the same image that we see in the streets with these young women and men uh, in the street, with these women also who come in the media and, and share with us analysis of what's going on and what are the hopes of the people and what are the demands, will be also represented in the table of negotiations. Uh, Jamal, Jamal al din uh, Talib, the, these protests, when you look at them, um, Seem to be, it seems to be a largely a leaderless uh, movement. There is no central leader that they seem to be rallying behind, unlike other uh, protests that we've uh, seen elsewhere in the world, like in Venezuela, for example. What, what, what do you make of that? Is, that? is that a weakness or is that perhaps a strength? Actually, maybe it's a strength, because all, if there is uh, leaders for this uh, movement, because the regime, the Algerian regime, is well known for... Uh, infiltration and trying to make... They are, they are actually, they were trying. They brought uh, al Ibrahimi, the UN envoy, to try uh, to help them in a way to save the regime uh, in this way, by creating leadership for this Hirak, as they call it, for this uprising, for this fantastic movement. The Algerians, they rose because they felt humiliated. They were a joke. All this great nation who made history they, they was simplified in this um, impotent, ailing president on a wheelchair. That's why the Algerian rose. And now there are even calls in the... They are refusing what uh, the chief of the army uh, proposing, and then they want again. They are all, already demonstrate, demonstration in the street, and they were calling for another Friday, for another 
million, as they call it, for another millions of Algerians to go to the street, uh, to take the streets again, and then to, to um, uh, insist on their demand, because they think this is like a, a trick of the chief of the army, of the regime, uh, to fool the Algerians. They want to sacrifice Bouteflika and keep the same regime. Funny enough, like one of those uh, well-hated in the Algerian, uh, in Algeria, with, uh, from the Algerian people, uh, Ahmed Ouyahia, the sacked prime minister, one of the, and the head of one of the parties of the um, presidential um, uh, parties, he was calling for Bouteflika to resign. What? Well, the Algerians were angry. They were saying, you are part of the problem. You and Bouteflika, and you have to go. And even they gave a chance to the chief of the army. They were calling, uh, they were saying, uh, brothers, army and people are brothers. Now they are turning against Gait Saleh. They want him as well to go, because they gave him a chance to open uh, a historic window for himself, because he is uh, associated with um, uh, protecting Bouteflika, uh, all this regime, all this corruption, without the help and the support of the army, Al Bouteflika, and all this regime of this cabal of uh, uh, corrupt businessmen, they would not have uh, uh, lasted all this uh, for 20 years. All right. Bouteflika, Bouteflika wasted trillion dollars. Michael Willis, this, this protest movement, when you look at it, does seem to be very... Uh, grassroots in its nature. Is that going to make it that much harder for the regime to deal with? I think it is. I mean, it's a remarkable cross-section of a population as well as a remarkable number of a population. We're seeing hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people on the streets every week in all the major cities and from a whole cross-section of, of a population. It's not just one particular part of the population. It's young people, it's old people, as your previous speaker said, a lot of women involved, a lot of um, even... Um, uh, veterans from the liberation struggle and we're all coming together to say the current system isn't working and the current leadership needs to go and this is a, a continuing demand they do not want a, a, a reordering of the system they don't want a shuffling of people they don't want to bring in some other individual that's going to be controlled by the old system they want the system to go but I think it is going to be a little bit difficult because there isn't a direct representative of the protests. I think the existing opposition parties don't have much credibility with the people. Um, they're, they're making statements, they're supportive of it. But it's a way of finding some sort of representation from the protest to talk and engage with the regime, maybe through a, a constituent assembly, maybe through some sort of transition. But there is a lot of wariness amongst ordinary Algerians. But any transition process will be used by the existing regime to buy time and make sure it's controlled and that nothing too big happens and things stay more or less the same. But I think the people will continue coming out onto the streets week after week in huge numbers until something really changes. So I think that really the ball is in the court of the regime, but it needs substantial reform to convince people that actually something has, has changed and that they can go back home and they can feel that something has been achieved. All right, I'm going to give what's probably going to be the last word then to uh, Nufal Aboud uh, in, in about the minute that we've got left. How do you see this uh, playing out then? Do you, do you see these protests continuing um, as they are? Do you see the government re responding more meaningfully? What, what, what do you think might happen now? I think the Algerian people were very smart because they advanced each time they advanced one kind of condition that they will uh, be calling for. for. In the beginning, it was a centralized discourse about Bouteflika going. Now we have seen that they're asking for the system to go, and uh, we don't know what's going to be the next. Uh, building a democratic process uh, requires at least four things, uh, a solid judiciary, a solid executive, and a solid parliament, but also and mainly, and this is the dominant narrative now in the streets in Algeria, a transparent military. Uh, we have to know that uh, in Algerian military is the fourth uh, among the fifth largest countries in, in the world who are actually importers of uh, the large arms and weapons. Uh, Algeria is among the 11 countries uh, that spends more than 4% of GDP on the military. And the Algerian people know that. Uh, what's going to happen to me is that Algerian people will be in the streets and they will negotiate every point at a time. 
All right, and on that note, we're going to have to leave it. Uh, Jamal Dean Talib, uh, Michael Willis, and Nufal Aboud, thanks very much for being with us. And thanks very much for watching uh, Inside Story. As always, you can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for more discussion, there's our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter, our handle at AJ Inside Story. For me, Hazem Seeker and the whole team here, bye for now. <laughs>